Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back and uh, welcome back to the immunology lectures. So, uh, today it is uh, the lecture 10 and uh, we will be discussing about the effector pathways or the effector mechanisms in the uh, immune system. So, over the last uh, 4 lectures, uh, we have been discussing the different parts of the innate and the adaptive immune uh, systems and particularly um, the mechanisms in the innate system and in the adaptive system, uh, the cells of the innate system, the cells of the adaptive system. So, what we have seen is that the innate system which is the first line of defense has some specialized cells to deal with an pathogen or a pathogenic invasion. Like for example, the macrophages, the neutrophils, uh, the mast cells, the basophils, these are kind of these are the part of the innate uh, machinery which is employed when there is a uh, when there is a pathogen invasion. So, like for every battle, so it is the immune system, it is a battle against the foreign pathogens, like some every battle you need a, uh, you need the army. So, the person who will fight, so those are the cells of the immune system and at the same time you would need the weapons. So, like the different weapons of uh, the battle and the weapons of the battle are basically the effectors. So, who are actually working for the immune system. So, if you need to win the battle, then you have to have some effectors because the cells by themselves cannot perform the function. The cells are just the army men of uh, the immune system. So, it requires the effector molecules, some effector mechanisms by which this battle is won. So, who are those effector mechanisms or who are those effector molecules in the immune system? So, like in the innate system and in the adaptive system, we have seen, we have discussed the different mechanisms, how the neutrophils, uh, they migrate to the location and then they try to engulf uh, the pathogen, how the macrophage engulfs the pathogen, induces uh, uh, phagocytosis and uh, in the and then this uh, after the pathogen is being killed, uh, then uh, it can also present this uh, the, the, the peptides, the processed peptides to the adaptive system and then the cells of the adaptive system they are induced um, or they are activated and they do some things by which they basically kills or clears, uh, kills the pathogen or clears the uh, infection or the invasion. So, now what is this something? what this something they do. So, that is the topic of today's discussion that is the effector mechanisms. What are the different effector mechanisms that actually work for the immune system and leads to the winning of the battle or leads to leads the immune system to win the battle. So, we will be telling very very briefly about the different uh, effector mechanisms and the effector molecules today. And because uh, these effector molecules uh, as, as we progress in our uh, lectures, in the future lectures, we will be talking about these effector molecules and the effector mechanisms very frequently. So, I will introduce you uh, very quickly to the different effector mechanisms and the effector molecules that are involved in mediating an immune response. So, let us start from the adaptive system again where we left. So, in the adaptive system, the adaptive system of the immune, uh, immune system, the adaptive branch can basically be subdivided into two. You know 
that is the humoral branch and the cell mediated branch. Okay. So, these are the two main branches of the adaptive immune system the humoral and the cell mediated and we have kind of discussed what are the processes of activation of the cell mediated immunity, the process of activation of the B cells and uh, all these uh, series of events that occur in the adaptive immune system we have discussed uh, very briefly. Now, this humoral immune system effectively they produces it is the B cell mediated immunity and it produces antibodies we know. It produces antibodies and these antibodies now what these antibodies do the antibodies by themselves they cannot do uh, any function. So, they need to uh, they need to go to the location and then they can do some functions with help of other effector molecules. So, what do these antibodies do? These antibodies can do at least three different functions. One, they can neutralize. So, neutralization, they can opsonize a pathogen. So, it is also called opsonization, or they can lead to activation of complements complement activation. So, these are the three major functions that the antibodies do. So, they can either neutralize the pathogen depending on the different types of toxins that are produced by the pathogen for example, the bacteria. So, they go and bind and, and by, that, by, by that they can recognize the pathogen and induces killing of the pathogen and then they can opsonize. So, they can uh, go and coat the surface of the pathogen. So, coating the surface of the pathogen and assist in the process of. So, they goes and coats the surface of the pathogen, they recognize the pathogen surface, coats the pathogen surface and then they can help in the process of phagocytosis. And then you can also have complement activation. So, now this is something new what I told is complements. These complements are one of the very, very important effector path of the immune system. They belong both to the humoral branch, uh, the adaptive branch as well as to the innate system. So, there can be complement activation which is antibody dependent complement activation, there can be antibody independent complement activation. We will discuss about the complements in very details in our upcoming lectures, but for the time being let us know that the complement activation is one of the important functions that is being carried out by the antibodies. And so, the complement activation in turn can lead to two functions, it can also lead to two different functions. What are these? One is opsonization, again it can also lead to opsonization. So, antibody and complement they together complement proteins. So, this what are these complements? The complement proteins are primarily small proteins or glycoproteins which are being secreted from uh, mainly the liver and uh, they are kind of proteases which are activated and there is a cascade of activation events that occurs leading to cleavage of these complement proteins. So, these complement proteins they get cleaved they themselves are not active. So, the complement proteins are named like C1, C2, C3, C4 likewise C for complement here. So, they were they are name, uh, named as like C1, C2, C3, C4 and once they are cleaved they can form uh, like C2 if it is cleaved it can form C2A, C2B. So, like this uh, 3 um, can be cleaved into C 3 A and C 3 B. So, this kind of cleavages occur and the complement proteins they get cleaved into smaller uh, proteins or peptides and these actually assist in the process of the killing of the cells. So, and the cells can be killed by the complements by two ways 
one is by opsonization, the other way is by lysis of the cell. So, they can also lyse the cells by formation of the membrane attack complex, something which is known as the membrane attack complex or also known as MAC. So, uh, this is what the complement proteins can do up upon complement activation and complement activation can be dependent on the antibodies, it can also be antibody independent, it can be antibody dependent, it can be antibody independent. So, it can uh, be a result of uh, uh, recognition of the various oligosaccharides, uh, mannose that is present on the surface of the pathogen is being recognized by some other uh, complement proteins and that can also lead to complement activation which is actually the uh, antibody independent pathway and the antibody dependent pathway depends on binding of the antibody and recognition of the antigen and that leads to the cascade of events uh, follows uh, a cascade of events that leads to the cleavage of different different complement proteins like C2, C3, C4, C5 and uh, there is a, a long list. So, we are not going to discuss it in details now uh, because we have uh, lectures uh, designated lectures for that. So, we will discuss there. So, just for the time being we, we just need to know that the antibodies by themselves alone cannot function. So, they cannot do much, they also require some other effector molecules, they also require some other effectors, some receptors that some, some kind of receptors or some kind of proteins that help them to opsonize or kill the target cells or the target pathogens. So, this has to be very clear and one of such effector mechanism is activation of the complements or complement activation and one of such effector molecule is the complement proteins. So, we got to know about the complement proteins and the complement proteins they can do again they can do two types of function precisely they can do three types of functions. One they can do opsonization, they can lead to lysis by formation of the membrane attack complex. What they can also do is they can enhance inflammation, enhance the inflammatory response. So, how and uh, in enhancement of inflammation if you remember uh, from our previous lecture on uh, inflammation and the migration of the neutrophils all these uh, events, then you will very easily recollect that uh, I told there um, regarding the cleavage products of the complements. So, there are complement cleavage products like C 3 A, C 5 A, C 4 A which are also kind of um, chemoattractants, they work as chemoattractants, they are also known as sometimes they are also known as the anaphylatoxins. So, they also help in enhancement of uh, inflammation or inflammatory responses. So, this is another part, this is another thing. So, uh, primarily the complement proteins, activation of the complement proteins can lead to opsonization or lysis of the cell by formation of what we call is the membrane attack complex. Now, coming to the cell mediated part. So, what is the cell mediated part? The cell mediated part can again be broadly classified into two different uh, parts. One we know is the for the CD4, uh, CD8 plus cells which finally develop into the cytotoxic T cells. So, the T cytotoxic Tc and the CD8 4 plus cells which develop into the T helper cells. Now, this T helper cell or the T cytotoxic cell they also help in elimination of the infection or the pathogen. Now, how? So, uh, the cytotoxic T cells as the name suggests the cells themselves they are cytotoxic. So, they can go and directly interact with the cell which is infected. So, for example, the infected cell or the infected macrophage and it can kill that. So, it can kill that cell, the target cell. So, it has a target cell, it goes and kills the target cell directly, kills the target cell directly. Now, how, how does it do that? 
So, definitely there are some effectors or effector molecules that helps in this killing by the cytotoxic T cells. And uh, for example, there are effector molecules which help in destroying the pathogens. For example, the granzymes, the granzymes and these granzymes are basically proteases. So, they are pro proteases. So, so, the pro we use the term pro means they are not yet proteases, but they get transformed into active proteases when they are cleaved. So, these granzymes are kind of act, uh, inactive proteases and they, when they are released into the target cell, they become active proteases and they can uh, do their function. So, that they can degrade the proteins and they can do a lot of functions. So, these granzymes are released by the cytotoxic T cells and how do these granzymes they enter into the target cells? They enter into the target cells by the action of another uh, kind of proteins which are the perforins for example. So, the perforins which assist in the um, entry of the granzymes. So, that assists in the entry of, the, of these granzymes into the target cell. So, let us say this is the target cell and this target cell is then it is killed or apoptosis is induced in the cells. Uh, by the action of the cytotoxic T cells and some of the um, uh, important mediators of uh, this uh, cytotoxicity is for example, the perforins, the granzymes and also you have the FAS ligand, the FAS L, the FAS L which recognizes the FAS. So, this is being expressed on the surface and then if it is recognized the FAS which is recognized on the target cell and then it leads to apoptosis of the target cell. So, these are also certain uh, effector molecules that are being released or expressed by the cytotoxic T cells which helps in uh, recognition and killing of a target cell by apoptosis. You will be uh, uh, learning about this in more details uh, from our uh, later lectures. For, for the time being, we are just trying to understand the different effector mechanisms that works in the whole immune pathway. So, now again, so the, the weapons basically these are the weapons of the immune system. So, and then we come to the T helper cells. Now, the T helper cells as I described when I started uh, talking about the um, uh, adaptive immune system, the development and uh, the activation of the T cells. Then I have told already that the T helper cells when they the C D 4 plus uh, interaction occurs with the class 2 MHC molecules bearing the peptides the foreign peptides. Uh, I have shown this interaction in the last class if you remember. So, uh, when this interaction occurs then the C D 4 plus cells they tend to differentiate into certain uh, T cell subtypes. And these are, the, these are the effectors. So, either they become the memory cells or they become the effector cells. The effector cells means the ones who will directly in the will be directly present in the battlefront. So, they will fight the battle. So, they are the effector cells and they are effector cells by because they has the ability to, to somehow release something or produce something that kills the cell, that kills the target cell as for example, we have seen for the CD8 plus cells. So, the T helper cells they also are called the, uh, the effector subset of this T, T helper cells includes the TH1, T helper 1 and as I also uh, told you previously that this T helper cells or the CD4 plus cells they differentiate into the different subtypes depending on the availability of the cytokines. Now, comes the name another uh, effector molecule in the immune system a very important one the cytokines. So, we will be discussing about the cytokines in future lectures in very very details. I will be teaching you about the cytokines later on, but for the time being let us understand that the cytokines 
they have a big role in um, the effector mechanisms of the immune system and the cytokines are released by most of the cells of the immune system. They are released by most immune, uh, immune cells by the lymphocytes and all other uh, cells are by the by the macrophages acti activated macrophages they also release a lot of cytokines. So, cytokines are one of the very 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 important uh, effectors effector molecules of the immune system. So, depending on the cytokines what cytokine is present in the surrounding that actually decides which type of subset of uh, the T helper cell will actually be produced. So, the T cells they the T helper cells there can be um, uh, at least 5 different T helper cell subtypes have been identified and this includes the Th1, the Th2, the Th17, the T reg or the regulatory T cells and the follicular helper T cells the TFH. I have told you in uh, one of my last lectures about these 5 uh, subtypes. Now, but what do they do actually? So, what functions do they do? So, for example, the Th1 cells they are involved in activation of the macrophages, they activate the macrophages they activates the macrophages and leads to the killing of the pathogen that is already there. So, they activates the macrophages and leads to the killing of the bacteria or whatever is present. The Th2 type cells, the type 2, the Th2 cells, they also do a lot of functions. So, one of the major functions is uh, of course, to uh, help the B cell maturation uh, uh, sorry uh, the B cell um, uh, activation and in the class switching of the antibody types. So, this has a major role in class switching of the antibodies um, in, in the uh, during the process of B cell differentiation and then the uh, and mainly they are responsible for production of IgE immunoglobulin E you will learn about the IgE uh, when we will be talking about the um, hypersensitivity reactions later on. So, uh, I, they can they, they help in production of IgE leading to they, they can also help in the class switching of the antibodies on the B cells and the T helper cells they also activates uh, the eosinophils, eosinophils and the basophils. the cells of the immune system. They also help in the eosinophils, basophils uh, uh, and uh, killing of different other types of uh, bacteria and pathogens. The Th17 is one of the important T helper cells that are essential for enhancement of inflammation. So, one of the major functions of the Th17 is to induce the epithelial cells to produce another subset of cytokines known as the chemokines. So, they induce the epithelial cells mainly and which leads to production of the chemokines. Chemokines are also produced by many other cell types as well and so, chemokines are basically the chemoattractants. I have told uh, earlier as well what the chemokines are. We have come across the chemokines uh, particularly in the inflammatory response when we have discussed about the inflammatory responses. So, chemokines are also a very important class of cytokines. They belong to the cytokine group family, uh, but they are mainly responsible for chemoattraction. So, uh, attracting cells from one zone to another zone. So, cytokines are responsible for cell to cell communication and chemokines are primarily res responsible for cell migration. So, that is why they are known as the chemokines because they are the chemo attractants and helps in chemotaxis of the cell. So, they help in movement or migration of the cells. So, these uh, Th17 uh, cells they primarily synthesize the chemokines. 
and these chemokines are uh, responsible as I told they are responsible for the attraction of different leukocytes and primarily uh, attracting more leukocytes more neutrophils into the uh, area of infection or the affected areas. So, and then we have the T reg or the regulatory T cells and the T reg cells are primarily they regulates the T cell responses. So, they basically they are they suppress the T cell response and thereby they are usually the cells which prevents the development of the autoimmunity. We will be taught about the autoimmunity uh, in, uh, in the later lectures in the later part of this course, uh, but for the time being uh, so uh, these T reg cells are one of the important cells which regulates or the T cell response and primarily they are inhibitory they has an inhibitory role. So, that they suppress the T cell responses and the T follicular helper cells as we have uh, discussed earlier as well they are important in the B cell uh, development and the class switching of the antibodies they are helping. Um, so, they help in the B cell development in primarily in this uh, follicles in the uh, in the germinal centers. So, they are responsible for the B cell development, the class switching, the affinity maturation all these processes these TFH cells are responsible. Now, let us quickly look into that as I told. So, these are the effector cells and the effector mechanisms by which um, the whole subset of the T cells they work. Now, let us quickly look into what effector molecules these T cells they produce or that actually leads to these functions. So, the Th1 cells for example, they are the major producers of interferon gamma we will learn about INF gamma signaling uh, later. So, they produces interferon gamma and TNF alpha which is tumor necrosis factor alpha. Th2 cells they produce interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 mostly which are the major cytokines that are involved in uh, the class switching of the B cells the antibodies on the B cells and they also produces the GM uh, CSF which is a granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factors. Then the Th17 it produces interleukin 17 and also interleukin 22. So, these are the interleukin 17 is one of the major cytokines which helps in uh, activation of the epithelial cells and uh, leading to the production of the cytokines or uh, they then they start producing the cytokines and IL 22 has direct role in enhancement of inflammation. The T reg cells are primary producers of IL 10 and IL 10 is uh, known to be one of the important interleukins or one of the most important cytokines that are involved in uh, anti inflammatory responses. So, it is basically also sometimes called an anti inflammatory cytokine or interleukin. So, IL 10 is released by the T reg cells as they are the major cells uh, which are responsible for suppression of the T cell uh, responses. So, these are some of the effector molecules that are being produced by these uh, T cell subtypes or the T cells the T helper cells that mediate that actually mediate the function. So, these are basically we can we, have an, uh, we can draw an analogy and we can say these are the bullets basically which are being uh, thrown by the uh, immune system and the cells are the warriors or they are the army men of the immune system. And then you have more effector molecules if we so these, these are the primary effector molecules that are involved mostly in the adaptive part of the immunity as well as in the innate part we also get uh, in, the, in the so cytokines are everywhere remember. So, the cytokines they are uh, almost everywhere and in the innate part so the, in the innate system. So, like we have the adaptive system and we have the innate system. So, in the innate system of the uh, uh, immune branch the, uh, of the immune system uh, we also have different types of cytokines and they are primarily produced by an activated macrophage. So, an activated macrophage 
which has engulfed a pathogen for example. So, this is an activated macrophage which has uh, phagocytosed a pathogen can also produce different types of cytokines and which is also the effector molecule. So, they can produce many cytokines like the interleukin 6, the TNF alpha, interleukin 1, IL 1 for example, interleukin 1, beta, IL 6, TNF alpha, they can produce a lot of these effector molecules that does a lot of different functions in the innate part of the immune system. Apart from the cytokines, so you can see that the cytokines has a big, big role in both the adaptive and the immune system in the communication, the cell-cell communication. Another very important thing is the chemokines. The chemokines has a big role in uh, cell uh, attraction or cell migration. So, they can attract the uh, uh, different cells uh, to different locations. For example, um, the dendritic cells. So, the dendritic cells are licensed to go to the lymph node and uh, for that it, it the process is called the licensing of the dendritic cell and their chemokines has to play a very important role. So, chemokines they go and bind to the chemokine receptor. So, some cells they express the chemokine receptor on their surface and some cells they produce the chemokine. So, when there is chemokine in the surrounding that that will go and bind to the receptors and that will uh, attract those cells uh, towards that location. So, that is how the signalings occur. So, the chemokines are the chemoattractants which attracts the cells um, expressing the chemokine receptors. So, the, and the cytokines as I described here very quickly. So, it will be explained very, very elaborately in our in my, in my later, uh, later lectures about uh, we will be talking about the cytokines. But for the time being, we get to know that cytokines are one of the major key players in the whole in the effector mechanisms of the immune system. So, cytokines are involved in the innate pathways as well and as I told the complements are also present in the innate, in, innate, uh, uh, innate system. As well as there are other uh, effector molecules I have told like for example, uh, we have the, the histamines, the histamines, histamine, the prostaglandins, and the leukotrienes. So, these are also present and these are primarily these are also part of the immune effector pathways uh, the uh, primarily the innate uh, the innate pathway mm, and these are also uh, they what function they do is they increases they increases the vascular the vascular permeability and they also uh, lead to smooth muscle contraction so these are also kind of the effector molecules of the immune system that are mostly involved in the innate pathway so if we look into the whole uh, picture the different uh, effector mechanisms and the effector uh, uh, molecules of the uh, of the immune system we have identified uh, among them are the complements proteins, then we have of course, the antibodies, the complements, the uh, different types of small molecules, the enzymes like granzymes, the perforins, and then we have the cytokines, we have the chemokines, different cytokines, different types of cytokines, we have the histamine we have the prostaglandins, the histamines which are mostly uh, in enhancers of uh, the inflammation. So, they are involved in the inflammatory responses and also we have these cleavage products of the um, complement uh, pathway or the complement activation pathway. So, all of these molecules, these effector molecules, they work together to enhance or to amplify the signal. So, they are the effector molecules that actually effectively work on uh, the different target cells and tries to kill the different target cells. So, uh, we will be talking 
uh, more elaborately or we will more discuss more and more about this effector molecules, the pathways that are involved, the effector pathways uh, in our upcoming lectures. Uh, so, uh, this much uh, for today it is uh, this much and we end uh, the lecture here. Thank you very much.